Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Marte, and today I'd like to tell you about my experiences so far anyway with the Raspberry Pi Pico and the Pico Environ Plus. So first off, here they are. I am working with the Raspberry Pi Pico H, so they came with the pins already soldered on, and the Pico Enviro Plus, these have come from Pimeroni, and the PMS 5003 particulate sensor from Plant Tower. So this is my first Raspberry Pi or Raspberry Pi Pico um, piece of equipment I've worked with. So the first thing I did was look on this website here for some information about what it is and how to set it up. This was a really useful website. It goes through an explanation of the Pico and compares it to the Raspberry Pi and gives you information about the micro Python that you require, the custom firmware you can download, how to put it onto the Pico, et cetera, installing Tony. Then I went on and found this website here, which was someone talking about the Enviro Plus pack. So this one here. Um, and probably the most useful thing from here was just figuring out which way around these two pieces go relative to each other, uh, which I got from the picture. And this is the right way around. So if you're also working on a project like this, this is the direction you want it which makes sense because the writing is looking up on both sides up there. So then I put this code on and was able to get a picture that was like this one. So I was pretty sure it was working at that point and was happily on my way. I then ended up on the Pimeroni site and found various examples of how to use the Pico Enviro, which is this one starting off with the readme file, which was quite a useful thing. Then went on to the button test, and that's what I've got on here right now. So you can see it says press any button, and when I press the button, it tells me which button I've pressed. So I did this to prove to myself that the Enviro Plus was working and that the buttons were all working, my code was working. I then moved on to this bit of code, which I'll show you just how quick it is to put on there. Go into this one, delete all of that out, in and run. Unstable at the moment with the heater, but we can see that this has started to print out really quickly. Okay, so we've got the temperature 27. Uh, I don't think it's 27 degrees in here, but it might be because my hand is in the way. 27 degrees, it's got the air pressure, the humidity level, uh, you know, all kinds of information that's being printed out here and was really quick to put in and worked. So that was great. I then tried to run this code next because I thought the Enviro All Basic would be the easier one, um, but I ran into problems here because I hadn't put in the library for the PMS 5003 yet. So when I tried to run it, it said error. So then I tried to get the library by going to tools and manage packages. And I'll stop this first. Yep, it's a good reminder. Tools and manage. Then I searched for PMS 5003. And I found this one here and I tried to upload it, but it wouldn't let me. And I got an error about the Visual Code Studio and needing to update, which I found surprising because I do update that fairly often. But I found also a website that showed that this is in fact what you're supposed to be typing in, which is apparently a different library. So install this package and that installed really well. Then I, well, in between that, when I was trying to figure out how to get the libraries to work, I wanted to prove to myself that this code here worked. I got this off of this website, but I commented out everything that was about the particulate sensor. So I commented out this bit and I commented out this bit here. Down here, it's now printing out the temperature and humidity, the pressure, the gas, the, the light, uh, the mic, et cetera. And these look like reasonable numbers. So 23 degrees might be realistic. Uh, it's quite cold today, so I was kind of expecting it to be 18, which is what it was downstairs. But if I move this, so I've got this, there's a light behind me. So you can see now the lux values have gone up quite a lot, you know, 600, 500, as opposed to when it was over here, 14. So that's working. 
And if I put my finger on the temperature sensor, we can see that the temperature is now going up as well, which makes sense because my hand is warmer. Or if I breathe onto it, we saw the humidity numbers going up. That might take a while to come back down. But I'm now satisfied that this is at least working as expected. So the next thing I was doing then is going to the version of this where I had not commented out everything with the uh, particulate. So I'll say with the particulate and now I'll stop the one that was going before. Probably should have done that first. And I will try to upload it and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I found this to be really finicky the first time this worked and all other times it hasn't. So I'm kind of expecting to see an error down here soon. I'll give it a second to upload. Yeah, so that's the error I've been getting. And I'm happy to say I figured out the problem now. It was a very easy problem to fix. I hadn't pushed the Pico and Viro Plus enough into the Raspberry Pi Pico. When I plugged them all the way in and pushed those pins in, suddenly the particulate sensor started to work. So I thought I would show you how I was getting the data off of the Pico and what the data looks like. This is the file that we're using to pull the data from the Pico onto the computer. So at the moment it was just saving on the Pico. This is reading what the Pico is getting and saving it into a file so we can make some graphs later. Here's the different things that are being saved. And if I press run, we can see that data so this is a plot of temperature over time, and this has been collected for three days. So this was about dinner time on Friday, and then Friday night, it got down to about 14 degrees in our house. This is Saturday night. It was a little bit warmer outside, so it only went down to 16. Sunday night was about 15, and um, well, Monday night hasn't happened yet. Moving on, the next graph is particulates over time. So we can see that when I first got this to work, we had been cooking chicken in our oven. So that's why the particulates were high then. It went down over the nighttime when nobody was really doing anything. Went up when we used the oven to cook lunch, up again at dinner, and then a small spike for dinner last night, which was using the oven, but not for as long. And then during the day, uh, was relatively low. And then the third one here, this is the derivative of the mics of the sound. And what's interesting here is we see that most days have two spikes. And I believe these are probably from our dog. He gets a walk in the morning and at night. And when he knows it's his walk time, if we haven't taken him yet, he barks like mad. And I think this is morning walkies and that's afternoon walkies. Morning walkies, evening walkies, morning walkies, evening walkies. Anyway, this is a, an example of what can be done. My next goals, number one, I want to figure out how to set an alarm on my computer so that it starts a new file every night at midnight so that I can just compare two days side by side. And number two, I'm going to be figuring out how to do subplots so that I can show you the interactions. Because, for example, I think when we had the oven on, and we had that particulate spike that's probably also made the temperature in the house go up. But right now it's hard to show you that because they're on different graphs. So I want to make subplots so that I can look at those interactions. So that's what's up next for me. And I hope you found this interesting.